you look at the history of successful people, there's never a set roadmap. I think most of us are chasing some degree of success based on our own idea of it. Totally. Um, I guess what I what I really want to know is, do you feel like sometimes you you're working too much or you don't get to see your family as much as you'd like to? Yeah, man, sometimes. But uh, I guess that's just the cost of what I'm chasing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. Cost is most commonly defined as financial. This is how much a burrito costs at Chipotle with a beer. This is how much a metro costs for a month in New York City. But this isn't a concept of cost that has to do with how much, but rather what it costs you to achieve your success. There's a quote I heard recently that says, you don't have to make yourself miserable to be successful. So I set off to talk to other individuals, creators, and friends to find out what their cost of success is too. But before I do, there's one important person I need to talk to. <laughs> hey, Mom. Hi, Gabe. How are you? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, so as you know, I'm working on a film called The Cost of Learning. And... The whole premise is kind of based off of my year last year and coming out of like this really hard space that I was in. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you to, I guess, get your perspective on on what you thought about my year last year. I was super concerned about your mental health. I was really concerned about your state of mind. Um, I was really concerned about your anxiety. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to pull you out of there immediately. I recognized that I was at a place in my career where it was imperative for me to learn in order to progress. So in 2019, I was away from home for seven out of the 12 months, making films all around the globe. I haven't seen my friends or family nearly as much as I would have liked to. And for the first time in my life, I struggled from severe anxiety. This was my cost. We're going to the Sirhan office to speak with Adrian right now. He moved here about two years ago, left his kids and like his whole life behind in California to, to move here. So let's go talk to him, see what he said. Uh, Adrian Vasquez, I'm from Newman, California. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Adrian is a multi-talented filmmaker, editor, and creative director for Ryan Serhant, New York City's top real estate agent. Adrian, say welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2020. He quit his seven-year job at Verizon in California and moved to New York City two years ago to try to work for Gary Vee. But more than anything, Adrian is a father of two, an incredible one at that. If anyone knows anything about sacrifice, it's Adrian. How do you feel about your physical and mental health? When you're in this world, you take it for granted. You take your mental health and your physical health because you're so like blinded by this dream and yeah, it's cool. And then it's really easy to lose yourself and just go crazy. You know what I mean? When you're trying to do all this and like you're in that hustle state and then like, unfortunately part of like hustle culture is like no sleep, you know what I mean? Which ends up being like bad for you long term. I've experienced that like, you hear about these like burnout, these like creator burnouts. Um, and it's literally just being super overwhelmed, you know, like you have all these projects and all these ambitions. And like, I think it's like a lot of wins, a lot of losses at one time. And just like on top of everything else, like it's overwhelming. And like you, you crash. Um, 
when I just get like when I get super overwhelmed or burnt out, I isolate myself and that's bad. Like I just I, I don't talk to anybody, like I don't respond to text messages. It's like a really, really bad habit. Um they usually break down a couple of days later. <laughs> I call them mom. It's so it's so cheesy, but be aware that like your health, your physical health and mental health are real. Um, so I'm trying to work on my physical health, uh, work on my mental health. What is your cost to do what you do? Still wish my kids. Um, they they were here and then they, re they recently moved back. <clears throat> so it's still that. It's still that the price of being away from them. Um, and it sucks too because, um, so I got on the phone. Can I show you something real quick? Yeah. This is crazy, dude. Um, <laughs> fuck, dude. Um, that, dude. Oh, fuck, dude. Is your cost worth it? Uh, yeah, dude. I totally believe it is, man. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be out here. You know? Um,. And I mean, sure it is, dude. Like, that's why I work all the time, you know? That's why, like, I'm here till, like, 1, 12, you know, just 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't want to regret not being there for those moments, you know? So I was re-watching part of the interview with Adrian, and I found some of his comments super intriguing specifically the ones about hustle culture, because as someone who works for themselves, it is super relatable. And I wanted to dive a little more into that, and I figured who better to talk to than someone who is in the environment that really started hustle culture and made it a thing. And so I just got a message back from Tyler Babin, and he agreed to an interview tomorrow where we can go and talk to him about his personal experience um, every day with hustle culture and how it affected him in his job. You. My name is Tyler Babin. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, who most of us know as Babin, is an incredible creator. You might know him from Team Gary V, where he worked alongside Gary creating his content for over three years. He eventually moved on to directing at Vayner Talent before setting off on his own creative path now is an Adobe Creative resident and working on his own projects such as his new original series called 24 Hours With. If anyone knows about hustle culture and the effects of it, it's Tyler. What makes you happy? Dude, I don't know. You know what's funny is like I've been thinking about this question a lot recently. Because uh, I used to always say like just making stuff, but I think that's too abstract. Like I don't want to like attach to that anymore. Um, the thing that makes me happy is being able to live my life on my terms, no matter what I want to do that day is. So whether or not I want to make a video that day, or uh, I'm really obsessed with playing Tetris right now, like if I just want to like play Tetris for four hours, I want to be able to do both things. And if I have the ability to make the decision as to which one I'm doing, in most situations, like deadlines come and like <laughs> I have to focus on work. But for the most part, if I have that ability to make those decisions, that will that's what makes me happiest. Last year, you left your job working for Gary mm -hmm. uh, to set out on your own path. Yep. Can you tell me about that choice? Yeah. I, Gary and I had had a conversation about a year before I left, and I was like, I'm really like not stoked. Um, and this is whenever I was still like literally filming him every single day. And then it was nearing, uh, in January of last year, I was in India like with some friends, like one of our friends was getting married. And uh, I was like, I don't want to go back to work. And it was because I felt like I was sort of at a glass ceiling in Vayner. And, you know, Gary and I still have a great relationship. We talk regularly. I'm, I've become even better friends with a lot of people that I worked with now that I'm outside of that building. But I didn't feel like I was growing anymore. 
and I felt like I went through, you know, a few months of like being on autopilot where like I just knew what worked there. I could consistently like churn it out, but there was no fire. Like there was nothing that was pushing me to like change what I was doing and how I was learning. I mean, the environment at Vayner was like intense. You know, I often refer to it as like, it was sort of like a blackout window. Like I don't remember a ton of stuff that actually happened. Um, luckily it was all very well documented. So like when I see a video or something, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that day. But people are always like, what was it like working at Vayner? What was it like working for Gary? And I'm like, it was great, but it was, it was blurry. I mean, it was like no days off for three years. What is your cost? So if I'm, if I'm like super, super, super lucky, I see my parents twice a year on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And even that sometimes, like, there's been a few times in the last years where I can't leave, like, I'm just like too buried under projects. Uh, you know, just kind of going down the list financially, like, things are always kind of in the air because I'm trying to both, like, saving doesn't exist. Like, every dollar is invested in something, whether it's gear or a trip or, like, whatever, maybe to, you know, build the snowball effect to keep going. Um, it's like you're, you're like walking this tightrope and you're just trying to like stay balanced for a second. And it's like you're holding shit and it's all like falling off the tightrope and you're just trying to stay on the tightrope for as long as you can. Yeah. yeah. Is your cost worth it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm satisfied. Um, or not satisfied is the wrong word. I'm fulfilled. You know, if like, is my, like all of those things I just listed they suck and I really, really wish they could be different and I hope that I can structure my life in a way that they are different at some point in the near future. Um, but that being said, I think if I, if I gave up like chasing what I'm chasing right now to save any of those things in this current moment, I think that compounds into like resentment in the future and ultimately I'm gonna be less happy in the future, you know? And that's life, I mean, I think you have to be okay with like, giving shit up and you have to like decide what's the most important thing for you and the only person that knows the answer to that is you. What have you learned so far about the, um, from all the answers and all the people you've uh, like interviewed, what have you learned about from, from their journeys that like has affected your perception of what you've experienced so far? Yeah, so like, I think that I'm, I'm like getting a very different result than, than what I thought. Um, it's almost coming down to like human needs like all all of these answers you know it's mm -hmm. like the basic human needs people just want to feel fulfilled and happy feel like they have a purpose um, which wasn't at all the the direction that I thought it it was gonna go in uh, I guess it wasn't even in the cards like I I was more I was interested in in seeing like what people what, what was their cost for, for where they are, but it's really turning into like, people are just, their cost is like, they just want to be happy, so they're doing whatever whatever it takes to to just be happy, you know? I wanted to dive deeper into the topic of happiness and fulfillment, and so to fully understand this topic, I called on my good friend, Sean Michael, to come over and talk more about just that. If I were to generalize what would have seen, then it would be, it's a reflection of how people are fulfilling their basic needs. So the six human needs are certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, and then the last two being spiritual needs, growth, and contribution. Happiness is some balance between those, and if you're, fil if you're fulfilling them well, you'll find yourself to be in a happy state. If something is missing, if something is lacking to the point where you're craving it or you recognize it's pulling you down, then that's where the that's where there's probably an underlying significant cost. As we take this leap to invest in ourselves, to pursue our dreams, there are some costs that we think of right off the bat. We know that we're not going to have a stable income. We know that maybe we don't know where we're going to live in a year. We don't know what that future looks like and we can accept those costs. What we often forget are the costs, the things that we've come accustomed to, like our family, always being there, always being close to them. And then what is it like to not have them there after a year, two years, three years, four years? Those costs often we don't see. We don't see those until they happen. 
And so it's the, co the invisible costs that pop up, the variable costs. That's what really challenge us in our journey seeking this growth. And if the growth is worth it enough, then those things that pop up, those costs that pop up are just adversities that we power through. And every adversity that we go through just yields more growth. When I set out on this mission to find out what other people's costs were, I was not expecting the answers that I got. I thought I was alone and isolated in my situation, but what I found instead was a community of people who felt the same way. I have a few great takeaways from this experience. We may each have different costs, but what is the same is we are all on this journey to find what makes us the most happy. We all desire a sense of connection and a need for fulfillment, and there will be costs that we don't see or expect, but it is in these moments where we will grow the most. And finally, one thing I know for sure is that our costs will require sacrifice. But Theodore Roosevelt said it best, nothing worth having comes easy.